Good morning. Welcome to Beautiful Savior. I think that we are all familiar with something called an exclusive offer. In our Bible story for today, we're going to see an exclusive offer that can only be yours uh, through grace and through Jesus. Everything that you're going to need to worship with us is going to be found either on the PowerPoint slides behind me or in your service bulletin. And now, if everything is ready, come let us worship the Lord. We begin by hearing the duet sing, Come Alive. Through the eyes of men it seems there's so much we have lost As we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked And one by one the enemy has whispered lies Then led them off as slaves But we know that you are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. Yeah. As we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. About of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive. God of endless mercy, God of unrelenting love, rescue every daughter, bring us back the wayward son, and by your spirit breathe upon them, show the world that you alone can save, you alone can save, as we call out to dry bones come alive come alive we call out to dead hearts come alive come alive about of the ashes let us see an army rise we call out to dry bones come alive So breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe. As we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. About of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive, yeah. We call out to dry bones. Alive. Please rise. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
We continue now with a responsive reading from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His love endures forever. The Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. All the nations surround me, but the name of the Lord, but in the name of the Lord I cut them down. I was pushed and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. You may be seated. We are again introducing a new hymn. This time it is hymn number 364. Uh, we will have our soloist introduce the verse, uh, verse 1, then we will go back and we will re sing verse 1 and go into verse 2. We now confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness. As we gather in the joy of the Easter victory, we must confess that we have not lived with the boldness and joy that Christ's victory means for us. Therefore, let us confess our sins to our triumphant Lord and ask then for his forgiveness. We join together. Holy and merciful Father, as we look to the empty tomb, we find their joy and confidence in all your promises to us. Yet, as we look at our interactions with others and examine our hearts, we see, at times, an absence of true resurrection joy. We must confess how quickly and how often we have failed to live with confidence and courage 
in confessing your name. We are truly sorry for our sins and trusting in our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, have mercy on us, sinners. Christ has come to save us and forgive us. Through his death upon the cross and his glorious resurrection, he has defeated sin, death, and the devil. Through faith, his victory is your victory. Paul reminds us of what it means for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. May we live in joy of forgiveness as redeemed and restored children of God. Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from Acts chapter 4, beginning reading at verse 8. In this section of scripture, we see uh, St. Peter preaching a very powerful sermon. And in this sermon, he tells us that Jesus is not a cornerstone, but Jesus is the cornerstone. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Here ends our reading. We continue by singing hymn number 358, verses 1 to 3. for the kids then.
Our text for consideration today is Luke 24, verses 36 through 49. Out of respect for Jesus and his word and work among us, please rise. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of our Lord. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite all the kids up to the front. Have you guys come to the right side of the podium? Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to see all of you up here. Do any of you have anything or have been given anything that's considered rare or precious? Maybe it was a special piece of money. Maybe it's some sort of a special. Awesome. Oh, that's so cool. So you had a, a half of a heart that only one other person had the other half, right? Well, from time to time, we hear about things that are kind of rare or precious. Maybe you've heard about certain... For helping out, right? Yeah, you're getting way ahead of us, but great answer. A special thing could be Jesus, right? I've got something pretty rare with me this morning. Any of you see what these are? What are these? These are rare Winnie the Pooh earrings. Why are you all laughing? You don't think they're that rare? They're just earrings. They're just earrings. Where, do you, where do you think I might be able to find earrings like this? You think I could find them anywhere? No. You think I could go to Toys R Us and find these? But if I went to an earring store, I could probably find these, right? So, so are these really rare? No. no, I could probably find other people that own them and probably some other girls that are wearing earrings that look like this. So this isn't really all that rare, is it? If you were listening carefully, we are talking about this weekend about the name of somebody and what he has done that's so rare that it can only be found in one special person. We're talking about finding salvation and the forgiveness of sins. Is that something I can find at Toys R Us? No. Are you sure? No. What about Walmart? 
No? Maybe Home Depot. <laughs> no? Well, where are we going to find something like that? In the Bible. In the Bible. And the Bible tells us about who? Yeah, the Bible tells us that one day we'll be in heaven because of who? Jesus. Because of Jesus. And so what's really rare is the forgiveness of sins that you and I have because we know and believe in Jesus. And that's such a special message because anybody who wants to go to heaven needs to know what Jesus has done, right? So we need courage and boldness so we can share that message with other people and tell them we have a special offer and that's found in Jesus. And that's his love and his forgiveness. So why don't we bow our heads and we'll say a quick prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming into this world to rescue us, help us, to believe in you and share with everyone else what you have done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, if you can go to the back. Vicar's waiting in the back. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. Words for our consideration are words recorded in Acts chapter 4. Permit me to reread verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. I would imagine most of you are familiar with this image. You've probably even seen it on a piece of mail that came to your house. Maybe it's a little mysterious on the outside who it actually came from. But as you take a closer look, you realize that it's just another piece of bulk mail. And if you happen to have nothing better to do, you probably open it up and you see everything on the inside is trying to tell you it's something exclusive that you'll only find with them. In fact, the whole point is to entice you into believing that you can't find what they have to offer anywhere else. And so they call it an exclusive offer. If you're like most people, when you see something like this, you probably quickly toss it into the recycle bin. We know the drill, right? You tell us an exclu it's an exclusive offer when it turns out that you sent it to millions of other people and it's really not all that exclusive. But you know, from time to time, there are things that are unique, that are exclusive. And this weekend we have a reminder of something that is solely exclusive to those, to you and me, through faith in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We find that reminder, actually we're picking up in an, for an account that started in Acts chapter 3, where we're told one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. 
When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. It's not every day that you find a 40-year-old man who had been lame from birth suddenly jumping and walking around, right? As you can imagine, such an incredible healing miracle drew quite a crowd and the attention of many, many people. And Peter took advantage of the situation and started to preach a sermon. He talked to them about how this man was healed in the name and by the power of Jesus Christ. And Peter went on to talk about how that same Jesus is the one who was crucified and three days later was raised to life. Luke records that in the wake of this whole situation that 5,000 were added to the number of believers. But unfortunately, not everyone was as excited about Peter's message and what had happened. In fact, we're told that it was the religious leaders that had heard about what Peter and John were teaching about, that is, Jesus Christ and his crucifixion and resurrection, that they were so disturbed that they put Peter and John in prison. What a turn of events, right? What do you think Peter and John were thinking about as they sat in the slammer at night? I wonder if it's really worth us preaching and teaching about Jesus because now we're locked up. To make the situation even more interesting, Annas and Caiaphas, who you might remember, were also involved in the trials with Jesus, which subsequently ended in his being sentenced to death by crucifixion. They're also involved now. How could Peter and John forget that? Would their outcome be the same as Jesus? Was this going to be their last night? Oh, and you might remember that while Jesus was on trial, it was Peter who was pressed about him, and it was Peter who denied him three times. I wonder if Peter was fighting back thoughts about what he had done while Jesus was on trial and now thinking, I wonder if this is some sort of punishment or payback because I didn't stand up for Jesus when he was on trial. Jesus had told his disciples that this type of situation would happen. And he had promised that he would be there to to help them. But that was when Jesus was still alive and was with them. Now Jesus is ascended into heaven and here they are all alone, just Peter and John. They're in jail. They don't know how this is going to turn out. Now it's real. How would you be feeling? Well, we might imagine, maybe even have expected that Peter would just do what he did before. Maybe just deny that they had really been talking about Jesus and the resurrection. Maybe that would lessen the sentence and the punishment. But that's not what we see. Not at all. In fact, we're told that Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter says, if you're calling us here to ask how this man was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become 
the cornerstone. Peter says, I want to make something very, very clear. The only reason this lame man is walking is because it was done in the name and by the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, and by the way, he's the same guy that you guys refuse to believe. He's the stone you have rejected. The religious leaders were the group of people that should have been leading people closer and closer to Jesus. Yet they were the ones that refused to believe. They were the ones that rejected him. They were the ones that were calling for his crucifixion. But Peter says he's the one that has become the cornerstone. And you know, it's not just religious leaders that have a problem with Jesus. All sorts of people from all various walks of life and backgrounds find a struggle in believing what the Bible teaches about Jesus. I would guess you don't have to think very hard about the people in your circle of influence and you, you know somebody. who has an issue with something the Bible teaches about Jesus. And that's a big deal. That is a huge deal. Because Peter goes on to say that salvation can be found in no one else. That means that without Jesus as the chief cornerstone and capstone of your faith, if he is not that cornerstone, then there is no foundation. There is no hope. And there is no salvation. That means that if anybody else tells you that you can earn your own salvation or any other religious group says that you can find a way to work off your salvation, they are teaching something that is in direct contradiction to what Scripture teaches. Well, that's a tough message to have to herald, isn't it? That's an even tougher message for people to stomach. You mean to tell me that all the good things I do can in no way help out or contribute to my salvation? You mean to tell me that Jesus is the only way to knowing God the Father and having certainty of forgiveness and salvation? You mean to tell me that what my church teaches is wrong and what your church teaches is right? Where do you get off talking like that? Where do you get such boldness and courage to teach such things? Where did Peter get it? Where can you and I find it? It's right here. Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Did you notice what Peter says? It was in the name of Jesus that a lame man was made to walk. Think about Jesus' earthly ministry. How often the sick and the lame and the demon-possessed were brought to him and he healed them. Because he has the power over physical ailments. You might remember this one story of Jesus in the middle of his sermon who has a man who is paralyzed, lowered on a mat, cut through the roof, and he heals the man and makes him walk. Oh, and at the same time, he also tells that man his sins were forgiven, which raised all sorts of eyebrows. But Peter says, not only does this Jesus have power over physical sickness and ailments, there's something far greater. 
This is the same Jesus whom you sentenced to death by crucifixion, but three days later was raised to life. This Jesus also has power over sin, death, and the power of the devil. If you're looking for where Peter's confidence comes from, where our confidence comes from, it comes from Christ's resurrection. As we stare at that empty tomb, we see a victorious Savior, Jesus Christ. And through faith in his name, you and I are connected to that power. We are connected to that victory. Even though Jesus isn't physically here among us, miracles are still happening all around us. And you hear about them, don't you? When the doctor says, we have no idea how you're healed, we know. And there are far greater miracles happening all around us. And that is when the name of Jesus Christ and him crucified and risen from the dead is preached. God the Holy Spirit is raising to life hearts that were once dead in sin and granting them forgiveness, life, and salvation. That's the name into which you were baptized. which means that victory is your victory. What other name would we want upon us? Because salvation is found in no one else. Through the eyes of faith, we see the power that our Savior Jesus has and the victory that he makes our own. And it is our privilege to be able to gather regularly around that name, to learn more about what God in love has done for us in Jesus Christ. And as we hear about what he has done, it's the Holy Spirit who fills us and emboldens us so that we can head out into the world and to herald that saving name of Jesus. Because there are countless people who are looking for certainty, looking for forgiveness, looking for salvation. And you know where to find it. You found it in Jesus Christ. And now you are a messenger to share that message with others so they can find the same thing. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we might be saved, save the name of Jesus Christ. May we pray. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away all fear. Lord Jesus Christ, when we hear the news about what you have done in love for all people through your death and resurrection, may it take root in our hearts and fill us with joy to herald your name throughout this world. May you remain our chief cornerstone, and may our confession herald, what we, herald that we are saved in you alone. Amen. Please stand. We now continue with our thankful response for God speaking to us. We use the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We now continue with our thanks to God in the form of our financial offerings.
Please rise. And we pray. Gracious God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. Give us boldness to herald your name throughout our communities and to the countries around the world. For peace and justice among nations, for honest leaders and good neighbors, for the gift of love, for steadfast faith and patient endurance, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer pain or sorrow, for the lonely and depressed, for the poor and needy, for those who love us and those who hate us, we pray. We ask all of these things together in the name of the Lord who taught us his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God now comes to us through his supper. Lord, we are not worthy to be guests at your holy table, but you are the friend of sinners, and you will not cast us out. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. You may be seated. Once again, if your dietary needs dictate that you would need either alcohol-free wine or gluten-free wafers, you will find that on the tray in front of the podium.
Please stand. We leave in the joy and strength of the Lord. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad. Receive now with believing hearts the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated.
Good morning, and once again, welcome to Beautiful Savior, especially if you happen to be visiting with us today. If that is the case, we'd invite you to come back and worship with us again as you are able to do so. Uh, some quick announcements. First of all, 